This video is going to be about how we simplify radicals. So there's a very important rule that we use for simplifying radicals. And let me write down an example of the rule. Let's say that we wanted to multiply the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. I want to show you guys what happens. First of all, the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 is the same as 2 times 2, since 2 is the square root of 4, and that gives us 4. However, notice something else. What if instead I were to multiply the numbers inside the radical first? In other words, if I wrote 4 times 4. This is, of course, 16, and we know that the square root of 16 is also 4. So we notice I did this problem in two entirely different ways, but I got the exact same answer. It turns out this is not a coincidence. This is always true. This is called the product rule for radicals. Let's write down the product rule. It says the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of a times b. This is, of course, assuming both numbers are positive. You're not going to be seeing an example where they're not until later on in math. Now, what we do in simplifying radicals, we're not going to focus so much on how to use it going this way. That's going to be in the multiplying radicals section. What we're going to do is focus on the backwards version of this rule. In other words, this is equal to square root of a times the square root of b. Notice that this is the exact same rule, except we're going from right to left instead of left to right. So let me go over how we want to do this. Okay? Let's say we write down a number like the square root of 24. The square root of 24 is not a rational number, so there's nothing we can do to get rid of the radical. However, we can simplify it somewhat. So let me show you how we would simplify it. We could, for example, take 24 and write it as 4 times 6. So I write it like that. But now using the rule above, I can actually write this as square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which becomes 2 square root of 6. Now even though 2 square root of 6 looks very similar to square root of 24, it actually is the simplified version. It's still the same thing. However, we prefer this version than the one that we started with. Okay? So, how did we figure out to choose 4 and 6? First of all, it pays to know what the perfect squares are. So let's write down what the perfect squares are. You can generate this list as you're doing problems just by squaring numbers. You can do it by hand, or you can use a calculator, depending on whether your teacher allows them. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, let's keep going here, 81, 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared 144, 13 squared is 169. We're going to stop there because it re you rarely need ones this big anyway, but you can always keep going as far as you want. So here's what you do. We know that the square root of AB is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. The way we choose A and B is that A is the largest perfect square factor. And then B is just going to be the leftover. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we look at 24 again, and notice that of all these perfect squares I wrote down in the list, the largest one that goes into 24 evenly was 4, right? Because 9 doesn't, 16 doesn't, and 25 is already too big. That's where I chose this 4, and that's how I broke it up. So this is going to be the largest square 
factor. And then the 6 was the leftover. And notice that the leftover stays inside when you actually do your answer. Okay? So once you break it up, so step 1 is to separate. And step two is to simplify the nice radical. Right? We can usually think of the left one as being the nice piece and the right side as being the not nice piece. Okay, so let's do some practice problems for simplifying. I'm going to do the square root of 45. Now, looking at this list, the largest one that goes in is going to be 9, right? Because none of the others go into 45. So this is going to equal 9 times 5. But I can write it as square root of 9 square root of 5, which just becomes 3 square root of 5. And that's my answer. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try the square root of 12. We know that in 12, the largest perfect square that goes in is going to be 4. So I'm going to write this as square root of 4, and the leftover is square root of 3, which is 2 square root of 3. Notice I jumped this step. This step right here, it can be skipped. If you want to just jump right into the separating of the radicals, that's totally fine. Okay? All right, let's try another one. How about the square root of 500? Seems like a huge number, and it is a large number, but looking at this list, we notice that 100 goes into it. Now, yes, it's true that 4 goes into it. Yes, it's true that 25 goes into it. However, you want the largest number that goes in, and so that's going to be 100. And so we have 100 times the leftover is 5, which becomes 10 root 5. And that's it. Let's try another one. How about the square root of 15? We may be tempted to write 3 times 5, but notice that neither 3 nor 5 is in our square list. In fact, there are no squares that go into 15. So this is already simplified. There's nothing we can do with it. So that's just our answer. Okay, what about variables? So throwing variables into the mix makes our lives a little bit more challenging. It won't be too bad. First of all, we should notice that if we take the square root of, let's say, y to the sixth power, we're looking for something such that if you square it, you get uh, y to the sixth. Well, notice something. If I take y cubed and square it, don't I multiply powers, and that becomes y to the sixth? So that means that this is actually equal to y cubed. Or, for example, if I do the square root of y to the fourth, then that's equal to y squared. Or, this is true for any even n, the square root of x to the n is equal to x to the n divided by 2. So all you have to do is cut the power in half when you're taking the square root. Now, what if the number is not uh, even? And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. If n is odd, Peel one off and separate radicals. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say instead of y to the fourth, I have y to the fifth. Now, although that is not even, I could write it as y to the fourth, and then I have a y left over. Now, the y to the fourth can be simplified, but the root y has to stay inside. And so that's how you do problems that have variables in them. You either peel one off or you don't. Okay, let's try a couple of examples using that idea. 
So how about 50a to the 12th? 50a to the 12th. We're always going to do the nice piece and the not nice piece here. So first we look at 50. In our list that we had before, 25 is the largest perfect square that goes into 50. So I'm going to put 25 here, and 2 is what's left over. And then we look at the A's. Because the A's are all even, right, we have 12 of them, we can put all of them in here, and none in the right side. There's no need to peel one off. We're left with 5A to the 6th, and then root 2. And that is our answer. Let's try a couple more. What about the square root of d to the 7th? Square root of d to the 7th. Well, again, we need to just peel one of those d's off. But then d to the 6th, uh, square root of that would be d cubed. So that's what we get. d cubed times the square root of d. All right, let's try one more of these. Square root of 200 x to the ninth. So we know that the largest perfect square that goes into 200 is 100. So here's our two pieces. We're going to put 100 on the left, and the left over is the right. Um, on the right is 2. And now for the x's, if we take one of them off and leave eight of them here... We get that. The left becomes 10x to the 4th, and then the right becomes square root of 2x. And that is our answer. Now briefly, before we're done here, I wanted to just discuss some cube roots, because they do come up every so often. Okay? So as before, if you take a number and then you cube it, you actually just multiply it by 3. Right? This is called the power to a power rule, or just sometimes just the power rule. You multiply the two powers together. Right? We did this before, except this time you're tripling the number. So it stands the reason that if n is divisible by 3, then the cube root of x to the n is just x to the n divided by 3. What that means, for example, is let's say we ask for the cube root of x to the 6th. Since 6 is divisible by 3, you just get x squared. Or another example, cube root of x to the 15th. Since 15 is divisible by 3, you get x to the 5th. Now, what if it's not divisible by 3? Well, you can do the exact same peeling off trick. So let's do, for example, the cube root of x to the 7th. Well, if I peel 1x off, then it is divisible by 3. And so I'm going to end up with x squared times the cube root of x. Now, because not everything is either divisible by 3 or 1 away from being divisible by 3, it might actually be 2 away. Let me give an example. What if I have cube root of x to the eighth? Now, notice in this one, if I were to peel off just one, that would be no good because now neither one is divisible by three. So this does not work. So here's how we want to do it. We want to peel one or two off. In this case, I know I have to peel two off. Now I get x to the 6, and what's left over is x squared, which ends up being x squared times the cube root of x squared. And that's it. Okay, so for cube roots, if n is not divisible by 3, Peel off one or two of the variable. Okay? 
Let's do a couple examples so we can get used to it. How about the cube root of x to the tenth? Well, we know x to the tenth is 1 away from being divisible by 3 because x to the ninth is. So I'm going to write this as cube root of x to the ninth and then cube root of x. So all I did was I peeled one off, and that gives me x cubed times the cube root of x. Try to separate your three so it's clear which one's the power and which one is the index of the root. What about when you're dealing with numbers? For example, let's say I was asked to simplify the cube root of 56. Well, in this case, you want to make a list of your perfect cubes. So 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, and we could keep going, but usually our numbers don't get big enough to use these, any beyond this. So how would we do it? Same way, we're going to separate into two pieces. We're going to give the largest perfect cube and then the leftover. So in 56, what goes into it is 8. And what's left over is 7, since 7 times 8 is 56. Cube root of 8 is 2, and we end up with 2 times the cube root of 7. Okay, let's try some more. This time we're going to combine variables with numbers. So how about the cube root of 64t to the 15th? Well, in this case, actually, everything is a perfect cube. 64 is, and also t to the 15th is, since 15 is divisible by 3. We end up with 4t to the 5th. And that's it. Let's try one more. Do a hard one. How about the cube root of 81a to the 17th? First, we look at 81. Well, actually, first, we split it up into two pieces. First, we look at 81. So the largest perfect square here that goes into 81 is actually 27. We know 27 goes in three times. So I write 27 times 3. If you can't do that in your head, don't worry. That's why you're allowed to use a basic calculator. Now we look at a to the 17th. If we peel 1 off of 17, it's 16, which is still not divisible by 3. But if I take one more away, it'll be 15, which is divisible by 3. So I put a to the 15th, and the leftover is a squared. We end up with, the left is going to be 3a to the 5th, and the right is cube root of 3a squared. And that is our answer. Okay, I hope this video has been instructional, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks very much for watching.